Welcome back to RPG Rookies, where we cover Dungeons & Dragons, tabletop role-playing games, dungeon crawlers, and all things fantasy. I am your Dungeon Minion, and today we have another flip-through and review. Today we're going to be reviewing and flipping through this product right here, which is the Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook for 4th Edition, D&D 4E. And D&D 4E is the most controversial among all the editions of D&D. And the shortest lived, it only was in circulation for a handful of years. Uh, here we have the player's handbook, and we're going to flip through this and give you guys a look, a peek at everything that's inside. First of all, we start with chapter one, how to play. I really like the artwork here on the opening page here. And it says, imagine a world of bold warriors, mighty wizards, and terrible monsters. Imagine a world of swords and magic, a world of elves and goblins, a world of giants and dragons. This is the world of the Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game, uh, the pinnacle of fantasy role-playing games. You take on the role of a legendary hero, a skilled fighter, a courageous cleric, a deadly rogue, or a spell-hurling wizard. With some willing friends and a little imagination, you strike out on daring missions and epic quests, testing yourself against an array of daunting challenges and bloodthirsty monsters. Okay, so it gives you a little explanation of what a role-playing game is, what is D&D, and how do you play? The core mechanic, the single fundamental rule you need to know for most challenges you face in the game. Okay, so first of all, here we go into uh, the descriptions of role-playing games in general. Here we have this little section for a history of D&D. It talks about Gary Gygax and Chainmail from the early 1970s. Then here it goes more into... Uh, detail of what's in a D&D game, the player characters, the dungeon master, the adventurer. How do you play? Your piece in the Dungeons & Dragons games is your character. He or she is your, representat your representative in the game world. Through your character, you can interact with the game world in any way you want. The only limit is your imagination. And sometimes how high you roll on the dice. Okay, so there's that. Then we have the core mechanic. How do you know if your sword swing hurts the dragon or just bounces off its iron uh, hard scales? How do you know if the ogre believes your outrageous bluff or if you can swim the raging river and, read, and reach the other side? All these actions depend on a very basic, simple rules. Decide what you want your character to do and tell the dungeon master. The DM tells you to make a check and figures out your chances of success. You roll a 20-sided die, a d20, and some numbers... You add some numbers, and you try to hit the target number determined by the DM. That's it. All right, so then here we have Chapter 2, which is the making of the characters. Again, I really like the artwork here. Uh, okay, talks about character creation, race, class, and role. Uh, section here for character race, character class, character role. Uh, here we have a section for ability scores. Uh, it talks about the different abilities, strength, constitution, dexterity, wisdom, uh, charisma, talks about generating your ability scores, uh, filling in the numbers here. Here's a section for alignment. It explains the good alignment, the lawful good alignment, the evil alignment, the chaotic evil alignment. Talks here about un being unaligned. Then here we have a section for deities, including Evandra and Bahamut, Karelon, Arathis, uh, Eon, uh, Kord, Melora, Moradin. Pelor, uh, the Raven Queen, uh, Sehanine, and it talks about their particular alignments that are associated with them. Here it talks about the evil and chaotic deities. Here's a section for personality. We talk here about social interactions, uh, mannerisms, appearance, background, all very crucial elements of creating a character. Here we talk about language and scripts, and it gives us some of the language languages there are including common, deep speech, draconic, dwarven, elven, giant, goblin, primordial, supernal, and uh, abyssal. Here's a section for making um, making checks. And right here on the bottom, we have these uh, characters here for dwarven script and elven script to tell them apart. Here's a section for attack rolls. Here it talks about gaining levels. Okay, then here it talks about the three tiers. 
We have the heroic tier. Your character is already, is already a hero set apart from the common people by your natural elements, your learned skills. In the paragon tier, your character is a shining example of heroism set well apart from the masses. And finally, in the epic tier, your character's capabilities are truly super heroic. All right, then here we have a sample of the character sheet. Here we have a chapter for character races. Okay, so we have the Dragonborn here. Talks about their abilities, their physical qualities, how to play a Dragonborn, some Dragonborn adventures. We have the Dwarf, one of my favorite races here. Uh, some racial traits, their physical qualities, how to play a Dwarf, and some Dwarf adventures. Here we have the Eldrin, and again, some racial traits, physical qualities, playing an Eldrin, and Eldrin adventures. We have the Elf here, racial traits, qualities, playing an Elf, and Elf adventures here. We have the Half Elf here. Again, their racial traits, their physical qualities, their playing uh, this race, and their adventures. We have the Halfling with their racial traits. Their physical qualities, playing a halfling, halfling adventures. We have the human here. Again, with their racial traits, physical qualities, playing a human and human adventures. We have the tiefling here. Racial traits, physical qualities, playing a tiefling and tiefling adventures. Then we have the fourth chapter, which is character classes. And here we have an introduction to the classes. Uh, here we have some Paragon Paths. It says you have survived and thrived through 10 levels of adventure. You've explored dank dungeons, defeated vile monsters, and learned priceless secrets. You've started making a name for yourself. Now you're ready to take the next step. You're ready to choose a Paragon Path. As your class describes your basic role in the party, your Paragon Path represents a particular area of expertise within that role. It's a form of specialization beyond even what a build choice is represents you might be a battle cler cleric and specialize in melee powers but starting at 11th level you can be a war priest and specialize in battle prayers and here it talks about different uh uh, Paragon Pass for the different classes. We Here it talks about Epic Destinies. After 20 levels of adventure, watch what trials could be left to challenge you. It's time for you to assume your Epic Destiny and shape your legend in the universe forevermore. Here we have a section for power types and usage. This uh, edition of D&D delineated between different types of powers. We had at-will powers, uh, daily powers that could be used once per day, uh, and encounter powers. Here it tells you how to read a power. It has uh, keywords here that you can read and a description of these different keywords. Here it talks about action types. We have different uh, attack types like melee and ranged. We have close powers for when you're in proximity. We have area powers that affect uh, an entire area. And we have personal powers here. We have a section for prerequisite or requirements. Some of these abilities require uh, particular things, uh, target and attack and hit. Uh, here we talk about miss. We have secondary target and secondary attacks. Effects uh, section here for conjurations and zones. Here it talks about sustained powers. Then here we go into the section for the cleric. It talks to you about the different class traits for the cleric how to create a cleric, different class features, such as channel divinity, healer's lore, healing word, ritual casting. Here it talks about clerics and their deities. Here it tells you a cleric can choose to worship any deity, but steer clear of choosing an evil or chaotic evil deity unless you have permission from your DM to choose one. Okay, then here we have a section for cleric powers. Um, class features. We have level one at will prayers and level one encounter prayers. Uh, level one daily prayers. Uh, level two utility prayers. Level three encounter prayers. Level five daily prayers. Level six utility prayers. Level 29 daily prayers. Then here we have the paragon paths as I mentioned earlier. The different options for paragon paths that a level 10 or higher uh, character can take um, associated by class for the clerics here we have the angelic avenger uh, okay we have the divine oracle we have the radiant servant and then here there's a few paragon specific prayers 
for these particular paragons for the angelic avenger and the divine oracle and here for the radiant servant and then we have the war priest paragon here along with war priest uh prayers then we have the fighter class here with their class traits talks here about creating a fighter uh talks about their features their combat superiority uh their fighters and their melee weapons here we have their powers, their level one at will exploits, their level one encounter exploits, their level one daily explo exploits, then level two utility exploits, level three encounter exploits, level five daily exploits, level six utility exploits, level seven encounter exploits, and all their different utility and daily exploits throughout the different uh, levels here. Okay, all the way to level 29. Then we have the Paragon Paths for the fighters here. And we have the Iron Vanguard, along with some exploits specific to that. We have the Kensei here. Uh, the Kensei with the Kensei exploits. We have the Pit Fighter with the Pit Fighter exploits. And the Sword Master with the Sword Master exploits. Then we have the Paladin class here with their class traits. We have... A section here for creating a paladin, protecting a paladin, uh, paladins and their deities. And here's a section of different deities that can be followed depending on alignment and such. Uh, paladin class features, channel divinity, divine challenge, lay on hands. Here's a section for paladin powers. Uh, here we have their level one at will prayers, their encounter prayers, their daily prayers and their utility prayers. All across the levels, all the way through level 29, right here. Then here we have the Paragon Paths for the Paladins here. We have the Astral Weapon with some Astral Weapon prayers uh, unique to this Paragon Path. Champion of Order, uh, again with their unique prayers. We have the Hospitaller with their unique prayers. And then the Justice Seer. With their unique prayers. Then we have the ranger class here with their traits, their class traits. Talks about creating a ranger, an archer ranger versus a two blade ranger. Talks about class features, their fighting style, their hunter's quarry. Talks about their ranger powers, and here we have their at will exploits, their encounter exploits, their daily exploits, and their utility exploits across the different levels all the way through level 29. Then here we talk about their paragon paths. Unlocked after level 10, we have the Battlefield Archer with some unique exploits for that particular Paragon. We have the Beast Stalker, the Pathfinder, and we have the Storm Warden. Then here we have the Rogue. We have their class traits. Creating a Rogue talks about the Trickster Rogue. Some class features, including First Strike. Uh, rogue tactics, rogue weapon talent, and sneak attack. Here are their powers, their at will exploits, their encounter exploits, their daily exploits, and their utility exploits across the different levels, all the way to level 29. Then here we have their Paragon Pass. We have the Cat Burglar with some unique exploits. The Dagger Master, again, with their unique exploits. The Master Infiltrator and the Shadow Assassin. Then we have the Warlock class here with their class traits. Talks about creating a Warlock. The Deceptive Warlock versus the Scourge Warlock. The Warlock class features such as Eldritch Blast, Eldritch Pact, uh, Fey Pact, and Infernal Pact, Star Pact. Here it talks about the Warlock's Curse, uh, all the Warlock powers, their level 1 uh, at-will spells, their level 1 encounter spells, their level 1 daily spells and utility spells, all across the different levels, all the way to level 29. Then we talk about the Paragon Pass for the Warlock here. We have the Doomsayer with their unique uh, specific uh, spells right here. Then we have the Fade Touched, we have the Life Stealer. And that is it. Just three different ones, three different um, paragons here. Then here we have the Warlord with their particular class traits, creating a Warlord, the Tactical Warlord versus the Inspiring Warlord, some different class features such as Commanding Presence and Inspiring War. Uh, word. We have their different exploits, their at-will exploits, their encounter exploits, their daily exploits, and their utility exploits across the different levels all the way to level 29. And then we have their Paragon Pass. We have the Battle Captain. 
uh, here with their specific uh, exploits here. We have the combat veteran, the knight commander, and the sword marshal here. Then we have the wizard here with their class traits. Talks about creating a wizard, the control wizard versus the war wizard. Talks about their class features, their arcane implement mastery, the orb of imposition, the staff of defense. Uh, talks about cantrips and ritual casting and the spell book. Here are their powers and their different at will, their different spells, their at will spells, their encounter spells their daily spells and their utility spells across the different levels all the way to level 29. Then we talk here about the Paragon Paths and we have the Battle Mage uh, with their particular spells unique to that Paragon. We have the Blood Mage spells, the uh, the Blood Mage, we have the Spell Storm and uh, we have the Wizard of the Spiral Tower. Okay. Then here we have the section for Epic Destinies. As I mentioned, this is post-level uh, 20 characters. Compared to a class or a paragon path, an Epic Destiny grants few benefits, but those it bestows are exceptional. Certain laws of the universe work differently for you, and some don't apply at all. Talks here about fulfilling your Epic Destiny and introducing the Epic Destinies. Here we have the Archmage, which in order to... Uh, fulfill that. The prerequisite is you have to be a 21st level wizard. Um, here we have some Archmage powers, Deadly Trickster and such, Immortality, some Deadly Trickster features. We have the Demigod as an Epic Destiny, again, prerequisite 21st century, uh, 21st level. We have the different features uh, such as Route to Immortality, X Arc, or Free Agent. Here we have the Eternal Seeker, again, 21st level. And yeah, there's that. Then we have chapter five, which is your chapter on skills here. And it talks here about skill training, using skill, difficulty class, and opposed checks. Here it talks about knowledge skills and knowledge checks, uh, monster knowledge checks. Here it talks about acrobatics or dexterity, uh, an acrobatic stunt, balance, escape from a grab, escape from restraints. Here it talks about arcana, which is intelligence. Uh, we have Arcana Knowledge, we have Monster Knowledge, we have Detect Magic. Here we have Athletics, which is Strength. We have Climb and Escape from a Grab and Jump and Swim. We have Bluff, which is a Charisma check. We have Diplomacy, which is also Charisma. We have Dungeoneering, which is Wisdom. Uh, here we have Endurance, which is Constitution. We have Heal, which is Wisdom. We have History, which is Intelligence. We have Insight, which is Wisdom. We have Intimidate, which is Charisma. We have Nature, which is Wisdom. We have Perception, which is Wisdom. We have Religion, which is Intelligence. Okay, we have Stealth, which is Dexterity. We have Thievery, which is Dexterity. Okay, and then here we have Chapter 6, which is a section for feats here. How do feats work? Most feats give you a small static bonuses to one of the numbers on your character sheets. When picking feats, there's one important rule to remember about these bonuses. Bonuses of the same type do not add together. So here we have different types of feats like class feats and divinity feats and multi-class feats and racial feats. Here are some feat descriptions. Uh, here we have the linguist as a feat and it tells you the prerequisite which is a certain intelligence in this case 13 um here we have other uh, uh other feats here we have action surge you have to be a human in order to have that feat agile hunter for rangers in particular uh prerequisites a dexterity of 15 we have alertness armor of bahamut we have armor proficiency armor proficiency uh different types chain mail high leather and plate and scale we have astral fire uh avengers rescue and lots of different feats and it tells you their prerequisites and their benefits so you can uh choose accordingly and here is a table of heroic tier feats we have the heroic tier feats. And then we have some paragon tier feats. So this is the next uh, level here. Um, right, befo right before epic, but after your heroic levels, you're going to have your paragon tier fe feats. And here's a table for your paragon tier. And then here you got your epic tier. And you got a table 
for epic tier feats. Not as many, but you imagine that they're very valuable. And here you have multi-class uh, feats. So multi-class feats, they allow you to dabble in the class features and powers of another class. You might be a fighter who dips his toe into wizardry or warlock who wants a smattering of rogue abilities. And earlier editions of D&D did not really allow for that mixture necessarily. It used to be a little bit more monolithic in that regard. But there are two restrictions on your choice of a class-specific multi-class feat. First, you can't take a multi-class feat for your own class. Uh, so that makes sense. And second, once you take a multi-class feat, you can take a class-specific feat for... You cannot take a class-specific feat for a different class. You can dabble in a second class, but not in a third. Okay, so there's that. Then we have Chapter 7, which is on equipment. And it has a vast array of different equipment with their uh, particular... Uh, stats here it tells you what you roll for damage their range how much they cost how much they weigh and what type of weapon that they are or what type of item that they are so and there's lots of that we have a section here for armor okay <clears throat> section for armor lots of stuff here arm slots and feet slots and hand slots because each of these items occupy a particular slot on the person's body we have neck slot here we have their waist slot and that's it for equipment we move on to chapter 8 which talks about adventuring okay here it talks about quests encounters combat encounters versus non-combat encounters rewards and experience points milestones talks here about treasure here's a section for exploration talk about movement and speed and terrain talks about mounts and vehicles and rest and recovery <clears throat> and then chapter nine a section on combat lots of people's favorite aspect of D, &D. and i think that this edition uh took lots of strides in making this <clears throat> a more uh, tangible experience as opposed to some other editions of D, &D. um so it tells you here about the combat suite sequence a round versus a turn in a round every combatant takes a turn a round represents about six seconds in the game world on your turn you take an you take actions a standard action a move action a minor action and any number of free actions in any order you wish and here it talks about action types triggered action types talks here about taking your turn attacks and defenses attack types you have ranged attack close attack melee attack <clears throat> and area attack uh, it talks here about areas of effects and it gives you these little diagrams to kind of explain the physical uh, process of combat here. Again, very tangible in their representation of this. Uh, attack results, ongoing damage. It talks about attack modifiers and combat advantage. Movement and position, creature size and space. We have a section here for speed. Talks about falling and flanking, pull, push, and slide. And again, lots of images and diagrams depicting the physical representation of these uh, these combats here. Actions in combat. Okay, here it talks about different actions in combat. And that's pretty much it as far as this book. And then we have uh, an appendix at the end and an index. And we have a sample character sheet. And that's it for this a flip through of this book. Thank you so much for joining us here at RPG Rookies. We'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.